Hello everyone, Jim from Ohio here, and we're about to start another household project, a home improvement project, if you will. Um, as you can see, I'm down in the deep, dark, dank dungeon of my house. In other words, the crawl space. Uh, I live in a tri-level house, and uh, this is the crawl space that's under the middle level where my uh, dining room, kitchen, and living room are. And the uh, previous owner of this home uh, did not take care of some of the things in this house that really should have been taken care of. And so that's why we're here today. We're going to try to address some of the problems and fix what we can. And some of it may be uh, fixed further down the road. But let me show you what we've got going on here. Um, as you can see by uh, that event right there that is duct taped, and there's another one of those vents right there. And then over on that side of the attic, uh, there's one right there and right there. This is actually a vented crawl space. Uh, so what he did was uh, during the summertime, he would take out uh, these uh, duct tape areas so that he got uh, airflow from outside into this space. And then during the winter time, he would he would do just like you see here. He would take a piece of insulation, stick it in there, and duct tape around it. Uh, now, that's been done for years, and there's probably nothing wrong with that part. Uh, but anytime you have a vented uh, crawl space, you're always supposed to have insulation. And well, you can see by the rafters here above me, uh, there's absolutely no insulation, uh, nothing separating this space uh, from the living space above that would keep the drafty cold air uh, from coming in through any air gaps or air leaks around this. Uh, and then going up, uh, or I'm sorry, the cold air doesn't rise, I know, but anytime you've got a cold space and a, a floor above it, the floor is going to be cold, and that's going to radiate through the rest of the house. Now, the other thing that uh, really wasn't done correctly was uh, the area between the rafters at the edge of these uh, joists uh, is an area called the rim joist. And uh, what he did was uh, he, he cut out just fiberglass bat insulation to fit in the area and tucked it into those rim joist areas. And while that's a little bit of protection, it's not really the best protection that you can get because there are situations that come up. And I'll show you over here. Um, we've got a situation where the... Uh, insulation doesn't fully come into contact with the joist. It's been moved around. Uh, that can be uh, moved by the wind from outside. It can be moved by moisture, uh, or it could be moved by even rodents that come in. Uh, this bat insulation or fiberglass insulation does make good bedding material for uh, some animals or rodents that may want to use it as such. Uh, but uh, the other problem with it being in the rim joist is you have uh, an area inside of the house that is heated and cooled and then you have the um, outside temperature and where those temperatures meet is in this rim joist area. So you, whenever you have a warm area and a cold area come together, you have a chance for uh, moisture or condensation. And this type of insulation can definitely get wet and get ruined whenever there's condensation. So what's actually recommended is more of a um, foam board insulation to be, or a spray foam insulation to be tucked into this area to totally air seal everything. Uh, and then you can put this insulation over it once you have that in place. But we do have a lot of airflow that comes into this attic. And as a matter of fact, um, well, let me show you what we've got going on right here. Um, as you can see, this duct tape piece has fallen over. And so what's causing that is uh, if you have a strong wind, 
uh, coming through. Um, this is what's going to happen. The wind on the outside of the house is blowing up against that vent and it's got a constant airflow uh, against this. And this duct tape, it just isn't going to hold, especially in an area where you have condensation and moisture. And that's exactly what's happened. This is, this duct tape piece has fallen down and so there's actually an air gap with air coming through there. And along with that air, of course, uh, is uh, cooler temperatures. Now, um, my basement area, which is a finished area, is over on the other side of this wall. And I know that if you look up in this rafter area right here, I do have some water pipes leading through the floor. Um, right over there is my utility room, and there's some penetrations through the wall there. So there's a lot of opportunities for the cool air in this crawl space to make it over into my living uh, area. And uh, so just for an example, I normally keep my basement around 68 or 69 degrees. Uh, and this space right here, looking at the thermometer, uh, this says it's 61 degrees. I know when I check down on that end of the basement down there, uh, it was actually, uh, looks like 50, uh, 53 degrees is what I was getting on the thermometer. But right here where you've got this cool air coming in, uh, that's uh, actually reading 49 degrees right there. 48 degrees is dropping. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to uh, cut... Uh, some insulation to fit into these areas. We're going to remove this fiberglass insulation and we're going to first of all seal up these rim joists. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to seal up this area. So we're going to convert this basement uh, from a, uh, a basement that is vented into a sealed basement. Uh, we are going to, uh, not in this project today, but later on we are going to add some more insulation uh, you can see, uh, it looks like he did put some half-inch uh, fiberglass board insulation along this part of the concrete or the cinder block wall, but the rest of the attic uh, has absolutely no insulation on it. So we'll probably add some board insulation there. And then, uh, now he did put uh, insulation, you can see, on the ductwork. Uh, and there is some insulation on the water pipes right here. So he did do that right. Um, but uh, there, we've got some work. We'll eventually have to try to insulate this floor. Uh, that'll help for uh, keeping the floor warm, but it'll also uh, help uh, deaden any sound as people walk on it. Uh, so that's what we're going to do today. Uh, so let's get started with these rim joists so we can uh, knock that out. Now, I, I read a study that said if you do air seal the rim joists, uh, it's probably one of the better things you can do for insulation in your home that you actually get about 20 to 25 percent of heat loss or cool air coming into the house through the rim joist. So this is an area that if we take care of, it should make a significant uh, benefit right away. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, to get this party started, uh, the first thing that we have to do is measure the uh, area where we're going to be putting our rigid foam. And um, when you, you're going to measure it this way, of course, and then you're going to measure it this way. Uh, then the next thing you're going to need to do is subtract about a half inch from both of those dimensions. And the reason that we're going to do that is we don't want the foam board to fit super tight in here. We actually want a quarter inch gap all the way around it. And the reason for that is we're going to come back and inside of that quarter inch gap, we're going to use some of our great stuff, expanding foam insulation. And what that's going to do is create uh, a waterproof and airproof seal uh, between it and the, uh, the rigid foam board. Now, I've done this one over here, but it's kind of dark, so I'll show you on this one. 
Um, now I did go ahead and the nice thing about it is when you measure your distance here, that same measurement is going to uh, transfer down all the way to the other side uh, where you have your, uh, your ridge uh, down there as well, or your rim uh, joist. Um, and I'm in a basement that has uh, 16 inches on center uh, beams, so all of my measurements, since I'm not having a tight fit, uh, all of these should be the same measurement all the way down with the exception of both of the ends. Uh, I do have a more narrow end here and uh, I think it was about 10 and a half inches measured here and the one on that far end was about 12 inches and all of these other ones were uh, 14 inches uh, was my uh, uh, the the amount that I'm going to cut. Uh, so what I'm going to do initially is is pull all of my uh, fiberglass bat insulation out and I'm going to try to get all of the foam insulation in first and then I'll come back with the great stuff expanding foam and just run down the line and and knock all of those out at the same time because when I do that I'll be wearing gloves and glasses and I don't want those gloves and glasses to get in my way while I'm doing this now the other thing that you're going to need is some liquid nails caulking and that's going to simply be used to hold this rigid foam board in place uh, since as I mentioned I cut it a quarter inch short on all dimensions uh, it's it's uh, gonna sit in the bottom unless I uh, raise it up a little bit and um, I don't want it sitting on the bottom I want to make sure that I can get some of that expanding foam down in that gap so that liquid nail should hold this in place until I can come back with the foam uh, so let's go ahead and get started you can see I've uh, got my pile of all my cut insulation right here so it should be a matter of just going down the line pulling out all the bad insulation uh, sticking my foam board up there and then uh, coming back so real simple project shouldn't take that long to do uh, it's going to be under a hundred bucks and uh, I think I paid uh, uh, $35 for the sheet of one and a half inch foam board insulation and they do recommend at least an uh, inch and a half you can go two inches if you want um, but for the glue um, the rigid foam board and the uh, expanding foam insulation I got a few cans of that everything was under a hundred bucks but this will be a permanent fix and I should reap the rewards for many years to come by doing this now okay so I've got my foam board insulation in all of the uh, rim joist areas and I got all of the bat insulation out so now I'm gonna go in and use this great stuff foam insulation as I mentioned and go around all of the edges now I can't stress the importance of making sure you do wear gloves and safety glasses whenever using this stuff it sticks to everything and it will not come off uh, once it uh, if it gets on your skin it, it it will stay there several days unless you use a specific cleaner for this uh, but uh, you don't want any of this to, stuff to splatter into your eyes either so I'm gonna just go around and the reason that I did leave the quarter inch gap is so that I can get the tip of the uh, spray foam gun back into the area and uh, actually seal everything in place and then uh, what we'll do is we'll let it expand and dry and then tomorrow we'll come back and put the bat insulation back in um, so let's get started
Now this will expand quite a bit. And the main thing you want to do is just inspect all of the areas so that you can see that you don't have any gaps at all. Um, this stuff will expand and fill some of the gaps, but uh, like right here, uh, we do have some back there, but I'm not sure if there's enough, so I'm going to go ahead and retouch that area right there. Um, but you do want it in all of the gaps so that we get a good total seal all the way around it. Now you will probably want to keep a couple of paper towels or uh, cloth rags handy so that you can uh, just wipe off the tip every now and again uh, to keep it clean. Um, this will get messy as it expands. It's not going to be attractive. It's going to look uh, all ugly with all of the expanding foam uh, growing out the sides of that, but that's fine. We're going to cover it up so it really doesn't matter what it looks like. Um, so, got a lot more of these to go. Um, so, let me get started. Okay, as you can see, I've got all of the rim joists now uh, filled in with the pink foam insulation and I've got that locked into place with the expanding foam insulation. Uh, I did go and uh, seal up my vents and then later on what I'll do is I'll come back with some um, of the full sheets of foam board and mount on the walls here and then that'll totally seal those up. And then where the vents are on the outside of the house, later on we do plan to reside the house and put a, a stone, um, artificial stone below the aluminum siding uh, or vinyl siding, whichever we decide to go with. And what we'll do is we'll uh, cover those uh, vents up uh, to seal everything up from the outside as well. But we'll hold off till either springtime or summertime to do that. Um, and then, uh, without crawling over there to the other side, I'll try to get the light. Uh, but, uh, and as you can see, uh, this side has done as well. Now, this side was a lot uh, more difficult to do because uh, this is where the power comes into my house, where some old phone lines come in, where uh, various uh, the water pipes uh, come in. Um, and then I did also have uh, two of the vents on this side of the house that I took care of as well. So now that that's done, it's just a matter of going back and all of the uh, fiberglass bat insulation. I am going to go ahead and tuck that back up in place uh, just to uh, cover up uh, what's there. And uh, it it... I'm not really doing it to pretty things up, although it will make it look a little bit neater than all the expanding foam sticking out everywhere. Uh, but uh, it'll just add that much more layer of insulation to the rim joists. And now that the rim joists are sealed, I don't have to worry about any condensation uh, getting the fiberglass insulation wet. Um, so... Uh, let me go back and do that, and then we'll do one more wrap up and, and call this video done. Uh, we'll be back after I get this insulation back in place. Okay, uh, project complete. I have all of my bat insulation uh, back into the rim joist area. And I can't tell you what a difference this has made already. Um, I actually spent two days doing this. I put the uh, the pink foam board insulation into the rim joist area. Uh, well, actually, I, I cut all the pieces on uh, one day, and then on the same day, I installed those uh, up into the rim joist. And then I came back the next day, and I sealed it up with the, uh, sp the spray foam insulation. And um, the next morning, my wife made a comment uh, that uh, the floor was noticeably warmer in uh, our dining room and kitchen area, which was always one of the coldest areas, which happened to be on that side of the cross space 
where all of the penetrations for the, the water pipe and the uh, wiring, all of that stuff that I mentioned. So just by blocking uh, those items, it made a huge difference on that side of the house upstairs. Um, as far as tips go, if you're going to do this project yourself, a couple things that I learned, uh, you definitely want a good pair of coveralls. If your cross space is like mine, uh, where there's only about three and a half, four feet, uh, you are going to be on your knees the whole time. And so a good pair of coveralls uh, that uh, can, where the knees can handle all of the crawling around uh, will definitely be helpful. You're definitely going to want uh, a pair of uh, gloves while you do this. Uh, handling the fiberglass insulation, you don't want to handle that with your uh, bare hands. Uh, but then uh, this uh, sticky stuff, there were multiple times that I accidentally, when trying to get it up into the nooks and crannies and hold the can upside down, there were many times that I dragged the back of my hand and, and actually uh, the back of my forearm across areas that I had already sprayed. And I got that stuff all over the gloves, fortunately, and I did get some of my coveralls as well. Um, but uh, it doesn't come off. Uh, so you're definitely going to want to protect yourself from that. Um, you're, you are going to want to uh, wear some glasses uh, just to keep the fiberglass particles out of your eyes. But at one point I did have the uh, spray foam can sputter and actually shot uh, some of the uh, spray foam out. And it didn't come towards my face. It did go in the direction the nozzle was pointing, but it had the nozzle been pointing at my face. Uh, I could have gotten that into my eyes, so can't recommend that enough. Uh, dust mask. Uh, when removing this insulation, um, you're going to get a lot of those fiberglass particles in the air. You're going to be huffing and puffing a lot if you're crawling around on your knees like I did. Um, so uh, protect those lungs. You don't want to be breathing that bad stuff in, not to mention all of the dust. Uh, there were several places that I found... Uh, areas in this insulation, the, the uh, bat insulation, that it looked like uh, a rodent, a mouse, or something had nested. There were several places where there were pockets that were uh, inside that uh, looked like were hollowed out and then covered over with loose insulation with some mouse dropping. So I did get rid of those pieces and replace them with other pieces. Um, and I did find <coughs> multiple uh, penetrations that uh, were perfect places for rodents or mice to get into the attic and of course I did seal those up whenever I found them. Um, you should uh, over purchase this stuff. Um, you are going to use more of it than you think you're going to need. Um, I thought I could get by with four cans of it. Uh, now mind you I did use quite a bit in the um, vent area uh, because I put uh, multiple layers of the foam board insulation and I uh, foamed each of those layers in and uh, put a thin layer between each one to make sure that I had good coverage so I did use quite a bit there but uh, I bought four uh, cans of this stuff initially and I think it was $5.99 a can uh, I ended up going back to the store and getting another four cans uh, of which uh, I have one can that's unopened and this can is about half full. I'll go out and use this in my pole barn project. Um, but uh, you're definitely going to need to go through, you're going to go through a lot of this stuff. So uh, over purchase it and use it wherever else you can for another project. Um, but it does only last, uh, once you uh, open a can, um, you're going to clog that tip. So uh, make sure you have a place to use it. Now there are some uh, chemicals you can get that's made by the same company that uh, you can clean those tips out or purchase additional tips. And I think you can store these cans away for a couple weeks anyway if you've got a clean tip and nozzle to uh, pump it out through. Um, I did go through um, uh, one full tube of the glue and then uh, this tube I just used a tiny little bit. You can see how much the handle's sticking out there but um, uh, and I use that for when I uh, mounted the foam board insulation into the rim joist area. I just put a couple globs of the glue on the back, stuck it into place before I came around with the spray foam. And then, as you can see, uh, around the top 
of the um, oh I forget what you what you call that the sill plate I think it's called um, I did go around uh, that uh, where the sill plate comes in contact with the cinder block wall because in some places I could see light <coughs> excuse me <coughs> got some of that dust uh, I could see light in several places between the cinder block and the sill plate, which if you can see light, chances are a mouse could flatten out and come in through that place. Uh, but you're definitely going to get air and moisture. So I did seal that up. Uh, and anywhere that I felt air coming in, I, I did go ahead and uh, put some of that spray foam. So hopefully those tips will help you out if you're doing this project. But uh, as I mentioned before, um, some of the studies that I read said you lose 20 to 25 percent of your air or get uh, cold air in uh, through your rim joist. So it is something that, uh, like I said, we've noticed it already. I'm interested to see what the next power bill is going to be or how comfortable the house is overall now that I've got the bat insulation back in place. But uh, yeah, we'll check it out over the next couple of days. But if you've enjoyed this video or learned anything, please give me a thumbs up. If you don't mind sharing this with your friends, family, whoever you think can benefit from it. And uh, if you don't mind, uh, please subscribe to our channel and come back for more DIY videos or homesteading videos. This is Jim with Jim Jenny Ohio. Uh, take care and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.